the right combination of ingredients is what makes a great dish stand out. And that's why so many people trust our next guest to do just that. Today on Table for Two, we welcome Senior Culinary Director on Food Network's Chopped, Sarah Nehas Hormi. Sarah has inspired our inner chef and influenced our palate on the bona fide hit show Chopped, as well as Worst Cooks, Best New Restaurant, Food Court Wars, and Sweet Genius. We're meeting up at Sarah's favorite Mediterranean restaurant, Agora Taverna, located in Forest Hills, Queens, on Austin Street and 70th Ave, featuring the family-based recipes of Chef Peter Mastoros. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, you look beautiful. You, you don't even have to stand up. You look so gorgeous. Thank you, so I'm do you. I'm so excited to sit here and hang out with you in this gorgeous restaurant. Thank you. And uh, I've never been here before, but you've been here before. I come here all the time. Okay. Like, and all the time. I would love to know, how did you find this restaurant? Well, I live right here in Forest Hills. Okay. Um, and I love Greek food. I'm Lebanese. So okay. I eat a lot of Middle Eastern and Mediterranean food. Right. Um, it opened about five years ago. And I was really drawn to the outdoor seating. I know. It's got amazing outdoor seating. In totally. fact, we're like, we're almost street side right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we would just come after work all the time. All of my friends, half, half my crew, mm -hmm. we would come here, sit outside order and just I love know it. it looks really wonderful how long have you been in New York for for 10 years oh, so you've been in for 10 years mm -hmm. where were you before then in Detroit you were in Detroit yeah. okay that's Detroit Motor City mm -hmm. so New York City were you planning on getting into the food industry I mean is that something that you always wanted to get into when you were in Detroit always I've oh. always worked in restaurants my family owns a Lebanese restaurant in Michigan oh fantastic so I worked there okay. I worked at the Palm restaurant. I don't know if you're familiar yeah, with the Palm yeah. restaurant. Yeah. So I worked there prior to moving here okay. um, as a bartender, and I loved it. I've always loved the service industry. Yeah, yeah. Um, By but the way, that's very rare for someone to say they love the service industry. Oh my industry. god, I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay. Are you kidding? I grew up having to do that for my dad. So oh, if I could get a tip right, for making somebody a drink, right? Of course. I'm totally course. down with that. Okay. So yep. your passion for food and wanting to be in food grew from your family's mm -hmm. restaurant. Yeah. But how did that lead you into television? But when I moved here, I went to culinary school okay. at the Institute of Culinary Education, okay. and I wanted to do um, food styling. Okay. So that was like what I was focusing on. Um, the school that I went to had a great relationship with Food Network, so I did my internship there. Okay. And then um, they just kind of kept me on freelancing. So I was working on a bunch of shows behind the scenes, and then that was it. Now I got to ask: a lot of people don't know what a food stylist does. In fact, I have very a novice idea of it. What what does a food stylist well, do? Well, when I first came here, I was under the impression like they just style food for magazines. Okay. But in New York, because of all the t uh, the television shows, the cooking shows, mm -hmm. um, you're cooking like for the sh the chef, like Bo Bobby Flay, for example, or right. Rachel Ray. Right. Um, they're opening their oven, and there's that finished. They call it a beauty. There's that finished dish that's in the oven, right. waiting to get pulled out. So you're not, you know, sitting there for three hours waiting for a cake to rise right. or whatever. <laughs> exactly. So you're basically you're cooking things in steps. Right. I think that a lot of people don't know that about cooking shows. I think that they think, is it actual time? Or I mean, how many? I mean, that's what people well, Rachel don't know. Ray in Thirty Minute Meals is definitely cooking in actual time, okay. and that's her thing, and that's great, and she okay. does stand behind that. Okay. Um, but for a lot of the other shows, there's no way that you're going to show, you know the making of a bread dough, having bread rise, right. and then cooking it in the oven in, in 30 minute time frame. So a food stylist would cook all of those steps right. um, so that it's done. So it gets done, so we know, so we don't, the people aren't there for 20 hours exactly. waiting for the food. Now you went from food stylist, did you want to be a chef though? Never. And the, okay, you never wanted oh, yeah, to no. be a chef. Okay, no. But you went to culinary school, mm -hmm. so there's other options when you're going okay. to culinary right. school. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. I always thought everyone who went to culinary school just ended up becoming a chef. No. Okay, so there's only a lot of options. So you started doing food styling. How did you know? Did you know the, the trajectory of your career, or was it no. happy accidents? It was. They were all happy accidents. Okay. And I'm I'm shocked, and I, I'm a little proud of myself at times, and I just feel I feel lucky. I was in the right place at the right time, but I also worked hard, and I continue to work hard. Yeah. And I started at the bottom. I was interning at Food Network at 30 years old, okay. so it wasn't like, I mean, that's a kind of a, you know, what I'm, I'm what? No, no, no. Of course, I think some people think that everyone starts at like 18 right. and like gets straight off the subway or train mm -hmm. or wherever, and then they're getting right into it. Yeah. So when you started at 30. 
But you rose very quickly in a short amount of time. Yeah. Maybe because I was 30. <laughs> you were like, I'm not, yeah, I'm no not nonsense. This. Yes, exactly. Point. Let's I get this what done. I want. Yeah. What have people said to you how CHOP has influenced them? I think it's exposing them to ingredients that they would maybe never see. Right. Um, which is which is important to me. Mm -hmm. I grew up, um, my dad's Lebanese, my mom's German, but in our lunch, we would have grape leaves and hummus mm -hmm. and like Syrian bread, like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on like pita. Yeah. And um, I was like so embarrassed. I'm like, mom, are you serious right now? Like, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> right. You know, yeah. and like grape leaves, like those look like cigars. I was like in third grade. There was a long time ago. You just ago. wanted to have the sandwich everybody else yeah. has, but that's just like the white bread with totally. the gluten. You know, I totally, totally understand that. But now everybody's eating Lebanese food. Mm -hmm. Everyone's eating hummus. And there's like a million variations on hummus. Mm -hmm. So I feel um, not only are people seeing new ingredients, but I want someone from Afghanistan to be like, oh my God, that's my bread. Oh, wow, that that's that's my bread in the basket. You right. know what I mean? Or right, someone absolutely. from Russia, like, that's my borscht. Like, right. that's what we eat in my country. So I want everyone to be able to relate right. to Chopped. Which now, you, when you're fi fixing these ingredients, obviously the produce is so incredibly important. Are you discovering new markets to find all of these things? I mean, that must be so incredibly difficult it to is. do. It is. You it know. is. There's a lot of... Um, seasonality into it sure. I mean what's in season is kind of dictating right. obviously what's in the basket yeah. um, and the, sometimes it sucks like it gets winter and we're shooting and we're like you, you're getting like the South American produce and then that's a little bit of a pain in the butt mm -hmm. to get it in and it's looking good it's you know yeah but we I mean we go everywhere we go to Chinatown a lot we have a lot of vendors in California so we're just constantly oh, searching gosh. for the best the best stuff I think it's oh Anime wonderful piece. I'm so excited thank you I'm oh my gosh it's a gorgeous. tomato based salad with onions, peppers, calamatos, and cucumbers, and a light dressing of extra virgin olive oil and vinegar, and a ripening. Thank Thanks, you Jessica. So much. Thank you. Gosh, that looks amazing. I know. And the tomatoes are always amazing. Is no matter this... if it's winter or summer, they're good here. And this is something that you usually get here? Always. Oh my God, it looks beautiful. Okay, good. Now, see, you're going to have to show me how okay, to do this I'll salad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll so I'll honestly make a mess I'm of gonna it. I'm going to give you some feta, okay. of course, to Thank go with you. it. But let me... Do you like olives? I love. Do you like all, everything all, on here? Everything looks great. Oh my god, you love this big spoon, and I got you one tomato. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Is this something you're, you and your husband order when you come here? Always. Yeah. Actually, he's like, "Can you bring me one home?" That's what he said to me. <laughs> sure. Get some to-go food. Mm -hmm. I know. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely gorgeous. So good though. Mm. Good. The tomatoes are amazing. And they're always good. I have to ask Peter where he gets them from. Because they're always, tomatoes are one of those things, if it's not in season, I don't want to eat it. Right, right. But they're always in season here. So oh, I don't gosh. know if he has like some tomato dude that he hangs he out must, with. Exactly. But <laughs> so he has good. the skinny on where to get the most exactly. plump tomatoes. Mm. So tell me a little bit about these other shows you worked on. You worked on Iron Chef a little bit for a while? As a, as, not as a um, culinary producer, but as a food stylist. Okay. Or culinary assistant, both. Right. Um, that was like in the beginning. It was fun, always fun. Oh my yeah. God. Bobby Flay, Michael Simon. I mean, you can't go wrong with those two, right? I know, they have personalities for oh days. Oh my God, for days. Are they as charming behind the camera as they are on camera? Absolutely. I, I love, love Michael Simon, like love. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's awesome, he's like, He's probably my favorite. Well, I, I love watching him on camera. You know what? He's, he's, I love him. He's from Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So like Detroit, he has a restaurant in Detroit. I always go there. Yeah. Um, when I go home, but he's, he's wonderful. But even my chop judges, forget it. Yeah. I can't. Oh my God. I would love to know because honestly, um, they are so, they balance like the seriousness of what's happening with humor as well. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a politeness too, you know, an encouragement mm -hmm. for these chefs. It's not, I think that's one of the reasons I think for me when I watch Chopped is they're not trying to make someone feel bad. And I think that's oh, what no. I enjoy about the show. Mm -hmm. They're they're very encouraging about what somebody is creating because they themselves have gone through all of that. Of I mean, course. I, I mean, how, and do you guys, do you feel like, because um, I know comedians have a very, small crew of people. Do you feel like that about chefs? Do they have their, their do they travel in packs with each I other? I so. Those, I mean, Jeffrey, Scott, Arone, Mark, like the boys, when the boys are on, yeah. forget it. Like, yeah. we die. Like, and it's always something. You know, yeah. there was one day I came in to, we call it like the VIP where we sit before 
we start shooting, and Aron is wearing like these ugly white socks <laughs> with his clogs. And yeah. I'm like, I would never date you if I saw those socks. <laughs> and he's like, stop it, stop it, you're making me so embarrassed, you know? So, I mean, we I love but it. we laughed so hard. Yeah. And I've been there since day one. You know, I've been yeah. with these guys since day one. Um, so we, we have such a great family there. It's it's so funny. But I you mean, know what, it, do you think that CHOP is going to branch out into any other areas? Can you see, I mean, you know, they've been doing this stuff with kids lately. Yeah, that would be awesome. You I know? mean, the kids are precious when they come on. I actually am more intimidated by the kids than I am the actual, like, chefs that come on. Why is that? They're so smart. And I'm like, who told you? Like, what are you Googling everything? Like, <laughs> I wasn't exposed to that. You know what I mean? Like, I learned to cook from my aunts and my mom. But, like... These kids are like watching these. There were some cooking shows when I was trying to cook. I couldn't cook until I was maybe like, so I had to. Yeah, you know course, what I mean? I never wanted, wanted to cook. Yeah. Uh, but they're so smart and they're like so educated and like. Oh, sure. Ooh. How's the salad? Oh, my so gosh. Good. Amazing. Well, Ooh, what is this? The beets, the roasted beets, with the Greek spread of almonds and garlic. Oh, gosh. My favorite. Sounds amazing. Thanks, Jessica. Well, I hope you enjoy it. Thank I you. It was amazing. It's so good. When I come, I always like just eat all of this together. Like, Do you? It's pretty much the same spread. It's okay. the Greek salad, the, the beets, the octopus, like, you just, and I don't want anything to leave. Like, I just. I, I understand. I mean, that's what I'm saying. So I, good. I want to try this. I want to put this on yes. there. And everything goes together. Like, you can mess your whole plate and you're fine. Okay, so. wonderful. Because I am. I'm going to try this right away because it looks so beautiful. So, I, when you talk about these kids' love for food, what I love is that children, begin their love affair, obviously, with food and holidays, traditions, and everything. Your family owning a restaurant on the holidays must have been so huge with Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? The holidays, Christmas is usually at my parents' house. Okay. And I usually cook most of it with my mom. And, you know, everyone kind of brings something. But my dad runs a sweatshop during Christmas. So, basically, he lays on the couch, yeah. passes out hundreds, <laughs> and then everyone is working around him. And yeah. I told him this year, I said, "This, I'm done. Yeah. Like, I love you. This is the last... Christmas. Have it at someone else's house. Yes. My dad has um, three sisters and four brothers. I'm okay. like, wow. let's. How about we'll have it somewhere else's time because yeah. I'm spent. You know, I yeah. like come home and it used to be way more enjoyable for me when I wasn't working as much. Mm -hmm. But now I'm like, I'm coming home literally for Christmas. I'm cooking for like 800, and yeah. then there's always like Christmas Eve, and he wants this, mm -hmm. and then Christmas morning he wants to have a breakfast and invite his friends. And every Christmas, everyone comes over, and I have no makeup on, my sweatpants, like my pajamas still. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, you know what? I'm done. Like, everyone's so pretty, and I look like the, the house every year. So I said, this is it. I'm no more. Don't do it like no that more. anymore. Now, see, a lot of people think that uh, television is so glamorous, but actually the schedule is pretty grueling. What is your Someone typical schedule? Me. They're like, how long have you been in show business? I'm like, really? This is not show business. Um, I usually get up at 4.30 in the morning. Are you kidding me? No. Um, 4.30 in the morning. Okay. We had to be the top at 6.30 in the morning. We shoot sometimes until, I don't know, 7, 8 o'clock at night. It depends. Right. We've been doing tons of specials, so we've been, it's crazy, crazy hours. But it's fun. I mean, we have a little green room. Sometimes I sneak in and take a nap. Right. Um, we all do. <laughs> but it's nice. I mean, it's, we're all friends over there. We're all family, so mm -hmm. it's a really... It makes going to work those grueling hours so much, so much easier right. because we, we actually like each other. Right. You know? mm -hmm. you know, you, oh my gosh! <laughs> Grilled octopus. That it is over a bed of red onions with dill, capers, and chopped yellow and red peppers. Oh my gosh! It looks Enjoy. amazing. You're Thank you. This is my favorite, like ever. How many times do you think I come here? Like all the time? <laughs> Every time you do, you get that for sure. Know, right? <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. I was wondering if anyone had given you advice about this industry. Because I feel like when you are working around so many of these chefs, mm -hmm. they have probably gone through their trials and tribulations of, of what's worked and what hasn't worked for them. Mm -hmm. Did any one of them kind of give you some good advice? And yeah, not you know? intentionally. Okay. Um, I was working at Food Network as a culinary assistant, and we were doing a talent test. Um, and basically, it was to see who was going to host a particular show, right? Okay. So Food Network brings in a bunch of talent. Um, Amanda Freitag was cooking. Well, maybe I should back it up. So, so when I was in culinary school, I kept asking my culinary instructor, like, how did you know you were really a good chef? And it wasn't just like your husband like likes your food. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or your mom likes your food because it's your mom and it's your husband. And they eat like you eat, you know? And they're just going to probably tell you they like it anyway. Um, and I wanted to be confident in what I was doing, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure exactly how to get to that, that place, you right. know? So I was um, working 
that talent test, and Amanda Freitag had got up to cook her dishes for the, the talent test, yeah. and she was talking about um, becoming to become fearless in the kitchen, you need to know your techniques. Oh, I love that. And I was like, that is it. Yeah. And I didn't know her, I had no relationship with her, it was yeah. prior to Chopped, but I'll never forget that, and mm -hmm. it like sticks in my head, and I always, I always tell her that story, because yeah. I'm like, Amanda, you were the one who was like, just know your technique, yeah. and you can, you can conquer. Oh so I went home, and I like, tried like, I went through the stages, like, okay, let me fry everything again. Mm -hmm. Let me like, roast everything again. Yeah. You know, do all of your basic cooking techniques, that just to get to that life. place of like, comfort, where you're like, okay, this is fried properly. You know right. what I mean? It's mm -hmm. golden on the outside, it's cooked through on the inside, you know, just get it, get it done, get it right. Actually, that's, fabulous advice because I think a lot of times people will think they'll see a show like that they'll think they have some idea of how to cook mm -hmm. and have the fantasy of, of being a chef totally. but not really understanding the amount of work and dedication and time these time, people are putting for sure. in. And by the way I had a bite of this this is amazing. So good isn't it? I know. My God. I think for people who don't even like octopus mm -hmm. they would love this and it's honestly the best octopus I've had anywhere ever in my life. Like, I'm actually going to second anywhere. you on that. And the, it absolutely is. There's like no fishiness to it. Yeah. It's not rubbery. It's perfectly tender. It's so good. Oh yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. And I'm, the capers and the dill and mm -hmm. the onion together, my gosh, so good. it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, I see, I kind of feel like there's this explosion of people that want are wanting to be a chef, but really don't have any idea. And, and I think sometimes they want to, um, they want to skip over and be the, the chef celebrity. Of course. Instead of putting in the work. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Have they ever talked to you about the amount? I mean, you see how much I they know, work. I see. Have you ever seen, like, listen to Alex Grinichelli talk on Chopped? Oh I mean, God. I'm like, I look at her and I'm just like, mm -hmm. where where did you come from with that? No where did you even get that knowledge? Mm -hmm. How are you retaining it? And like, just the way she speaks about food is the most inspiring thing yeah. ever, yeah. ever. No, I mean, that's one of my favorite, besides seeing how the ingredients come together, mm -hmm. listening to it, I feel like I'm getting a little food education totally. on, I mean, things that you're not even thinking about how you can describe food mm -hmm. and what, what the person's created. Well, tell me about some of the other shows, because I saw that you work on Food Court Wars now. Are mm -hmm. these things that you've done, are you, do you continuously work on these other shows? What well, are the other shows you work food on? Food Court Wars, um, hasn't been picked up for the third season, so okay. I did the first two, okay. um, which was so fun with Tyler Florence. Right. He's so inspiring, yeah. um, and he's been around since like day one, so he's one of, I'll give him that all day, you know? Yeah. He has so much knowledge, and he literally has a recipe for everything. Like, yeah. if you look, if you Googled like, octopus from Agora Taverna, yeah. Tyler has the recipe already. Yeah, like every Everything on this table, Tyler has the recipe. Amazing. Um, so I did Food Court Wars um, with him. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Jessica, you cannot take the octopus away though, okay? I yeah. will not. Okay. <laughs> Here is the Agora chips. They're lightly fried zucchini and eggplant with a few pieces of saganaki, which is fried cheese of Capulo Graviera. Oh my gosh. It's a sharp cheese. And we have we serve it with a scoop of tzatziki, which is Greek yogurt with garlic and cucumbers. Sounds Thank amazing. Enjoy. Thank you. So we were talking about Food Court War. Mm -hmm. You said it wasn't picked up for a third season, but are, so are you working on these other shows then? You have, it was Food Court Wars. Gosh, you work on so many yeah, shows. Yeah, a lot. I, you know, and Chop keeps me really busy. We usually shoot 39 episodes twice a year. So An I'm literally like, shows. I mean, <laughs> oh last year was brutal. I went from traveling for six months on Food Court Wars. I was, I came home on a Friday, and Monday I was on the Chop set. I was on Chop from um, the, the end of March until the beginning of July. Okay. And then immediately was on Best New Restaurant for Bravo, a Bravo wow. show. Okay. Which I was traveling for. Came back, finished up Best New Restaurant, then I took like a little sabbatical for a few minutes. Okay. Um, and then back on Chopped. Just finished Chopped. Now I'm going to do Worst Cooks. Okay. Go back on Chopped in August and then take a little break and then go back on Chopped again in October. Okay. So Chopped is kind of like keeping me. Um, this is your to hunt. themselves right now. That's like your main man is Chopped, For and then sure. you have a lot of other. He's my, he's my sugar daddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally. I love Chopped. So what do you do in your free time in New York? It sounds like you only have an hour of free time in New York. I have no free time. I'm like literally, <laughs> um, I catch up on life, really. Right. I try to like, I'm, they open a new French market um, in Tribeca. Have you heard about oh, that? No, I didn't know about that. It's supposed to be like Italy, but French, and Whoa. I'm like trying to go there tomorrow. Okay. So I want to go there, look around, find some new stuff for Chopped. Um, I have to do the baskets for Chopped yeah, yeah. right okay. now, like right now. So I need to like go grocery shopping for like 
new ingredients. So I'll be doing that. Does anybody just on the street, if they if they know you or recognize you, do they ever say to you, well, I want you to put this ingredient in the basket? Always. Really? Yeah, and then it's like broccoli. I'm like, do you watch the show? Because we probably <laughs> had broccoli in the basket before. I mean. Has there been like one particular ingredient that's really tripped people up that you can remember that might have really tripped somebody up? That they literally were like, I have zero idea what I'm going to you do know, with this. You know, it's, it's not just like one particular ingredient. It's yeah. actually surprising to me how many ingredients I watch some of these contestants taste for the yeah. first time. And I'm like, you've never had that before? Like, yeah. what rock are you living under? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not being mean, but like, no, no, really, no, you've never tried that before? Yeah. Um, well, especially since they, they want to be cooks, so you should probably yeah, know. and most so of them are cooks. cooks yeah, you know, right, chefs. of course, yeah. So, and they're working in, in kitchens. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Like, yeah. and it's always like, I'm on my PL, and I'm like, all right, just never tried that before. Like, you can see them, like, never. Yeah taking that first bite of something, which is interesting, and yeah. seeing their reaction, like, do they like it, do they not like it? Yeah. Uh, but we've been doing a lot of composed dishes on top because we're kind of running out of ingredients. Right. Um, so we'll do, like, like hypothetically, we would do, like, this octopus dish. Right. And Ty would say, and grilled octopus. Right. So they have the option to use the octopus, or they right. could use the onions, or they could oh, use just, okay. they don't have to use the entire dish. Right, you know? right. I think they get stumped on that, but there's typically when I put something like that in the basket, mm -hmm. I want them to pull something out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not, I definitely am not like you have to use this whole entire dish in your basket, like yeah. in your in your dish. Just pull something, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's stumping them. I believe it. Good afternoon. How are Hi. you? Hi. Wonderful. Your crop cake? Oh, that looks amazing. Wow. And here we have your bronzy. Mm. Thank you. Do you guys want to split up for you? How you like to get Any which way you think, I would love. I don't actually know how to do this. We'll do that. We'll do that for you. Okay, Start wonderful. Right. So how long have you been running this um, restaurant? Everything. On the fifth year. So this five fifth years? Year? Yeah, correct. Okay. So which, are these some of your specialty dishes right here? Uh, I would say the uh, Branzino, along with the crab cake, is one of the uh, best-selling entrees that we have. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, yeah, I would How love... are your appetizers, by the way? Oh, my gosh. Every single thing. I've never had fresher tomatoes, one. I thought... Organically grown. They were, I mean, excellent. Every single thing was They beautiful. do make a difference, especially in the Greek South. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I mean, honestly, just the taste is fantastic. Everything has been wonderful. How did you like the octopus? Honestly, and I agree with Sarah, it's the best octopus I've ever okay. had. Ever. ever. Honestly, it wasn't fishy, like she said. It had a, like a nice bounce. It was, oh, it was so wonderful. I love the dill. The Very onions, nice. the capers, oh my Very gosh, nice. it's fantastic. So as you see, we specialize on seafood. Yes. And I go back probably, I don't know, early 90s, late 80s, when I started in the island, in the, in the island of course in Greece. Okay. Where I was born and raised. Okay. And I try to, I try to bring memories now from my childhood and what my mother used to cook and my grandmother, which you know, we grow up with fish and every day, daily, I would say, different kind of fish. So I try to bring that as close as possible to that taste. I love that. I don't know how close I am in terms of what I have in mind and the, the memories that I bring from yeah. the childhood. But I think I'm very close and people appreciate it. Yeah, definitely, it's something unique to the area. It's not just a restaurant like any other. It's definitely something very, very unique for them. See, honestly, I can taste that it feels like home cooking because, and now I understand why, because there's so much of a history I of your family in there. I focus on the ingredients, like the fish has to be the freshest possible. I focus on the fresh vegetables, which they have to be beyond phenomenal in yeah. order for them to pass the door and come in. Wonderful. And that makes a huge difference. But very simple, minimally seasoned. As you can see, the Brandino, mm -hmm. it just has extra virgin olive oil and fresh lemon, capers, sea salt, and fresh oregano. All the ingredients are imported from Greece. Yeah. Oh, and the Brandino is from Greece, and another fish that I have is from Greece. And we do get some local, obviously, vegetables and we do get some fish as the black sea bass and an array of different fish that they are from the states oh my gosh well i'm excited to try this Please. oh my goodness what do we have here so we have the porta as we say in greek and we use an escarole okay. so what we do is uh, we boil the, the the greens and then we saute them in extra virgin olive oil so again we don't do that much but you're definitely going to get the flavor of the of the actual greens 
and the vegetable. And here we have Sarah's favorite, the lemon Ever. potatoes. <laughs> so oven roasted lemon potatoes, which has obviously a lot of lemon, garlic, a lot of more ingredients that I mentioned well, now, but definitely very tasty. And That's wonderful. Well, this looks so good. Beautiful, and I can't wait to try all of this. Um, yes, if someone could help us Please. open this, I will, I will do that for you. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited. Well, what should, should I try first? I'm gonna try this. This is my favorite because you highly. And what is this called again? This is the lemon potato. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! They're braised in like lemon juice, a little bit of chicken stock, fresh tomatoes, and some thyme, a little bit of oregano. They're so good. They have them on the brunch menu, and I order them with like an over easy egg on top. So there's they're a little acidic from the lemon. Okay. But the the creaminess of that egg yolk on there is like ridiculous. Okay. One, so they smell fantastic, and they just cut like I was cutting some butter. Uh, so good. Yeah. I could see eating this three times a week oh my easily. God. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so, so good. good. <laughs> you know what, I would rather do that on a different table. Sure, so no problem. Oh, it's no you. problem. Just one second. Oh, you got it. Thank you. This is the crab cake. Oh my gosh, I've never seen this like this before. It's beautiful. Look, it's all jumbo lump, so there's not a lot of filler in there. It's just lump of crab. It's so it's good. It's beautiful. Well, I love hearing about his stories of childhood, and, I, and that's what I was saying about your family. It's food and memory and history, all of it's mm -hmm. so tied together and I can see this is why this is so, it's like coming to a, yeah. eating at someone's home. Or my own like, house, but it's already done. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Oh gosh. So good. My husband would be very jealous of this meal right now. That's, you should bring your husband, I'll bring my husband, we'll do a double date. Uh, this sounds amazing, yes. I love that. And here's your brain dinner. Oh wow. No problem, thank you. And this one's, is this requested a lot? <laughs> thank you. Oh, that looks beautiful. Mmm, it smells beautiful too. So good. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I can't wait to try this. So good. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna try this. I know, too. I'm like so happy right now. <laughs> I yeah, this is honestly this is the best meal I've had in quite a while. That's I'm why so happy. I, that's why I love to come here, because it's good, it's healthy. I don't feel like I'm eating garbage. No, this is um, that's the thing is too, every single thing feels really light. Even mm -hmm. the potatoes feel and taste very light, you know? They're so good. Mm, it's fantastic. So how is your entrees? So good. So amazing. I love cake. every single, every single item. Honestly. So if you had to choose either or, which one would you Either want? or? Can I choose two? Yeah, no, Wait, either the single. crab cake or the bronzino? Yes, oh, oh no. No. But I've never, <laughs> I've never had the crab cake here and I would definitely order it. I love it. It's delicious. I would just order this and then I'd make sure my husband ordered that. Right. And then there could be two. Does okay. that work out? Potatoes, Level potatoes are legendary. Honestly, they're so, I mean, honestly, they're so good. Everything is wonderful. The olive oil, the, and I was just saying to Sarah, it's like such simple ingredients, but you guys make magic happen with them. Right. So I really exactly love it. Exactly what I mentioned before. Yeah. Well, everything um, has been absolutely beautiful. I do beautiful. have uh, two desserts that I want to introduce you to, so we'll bring I will be out. okay with that, yes. Well, what are they? Good. Well, I'll let you put it. When you bring uh, them out, you can When I bring them out, I will describe Perfect. them. So, and then you tell me what you think of each one. So oh, I'm so excited. Thank good, you good. so much. I'll be thank back you. Okay, thank you. Goodness. The Greek yogurt. Beautiful. And the uh, kamek, I will explain to you what we have exactly. Yes. yes. So, here we have the strained gold milk uh, Greek yogurt with fresh strawberry, blueberries, and thyme honey, and sprinkled with walnuts. Amazing. And here we have uh, something that most of the people are obsessed about. It. Yeah. Uh, it's called Ekmek, so we're having the first layer which is shredded phyllo infused mm, in orange and cinnamon syrup. We'll have some rose water, you'll probably get that taste and the smell of the rose water. Yeah. The vanilla custard, fresh whipped cream and pistachios on the top. Oh my goodness, they so. look beautiful. And what, and what is the name of this one again? Ekmek. Ekmek, okay, I'm excited. It's something you need to remember. I will, I think I will, right after I take a bite of yeah. it. <laughs> so Thank good. you so much. Enjoy Thank it. you. Thank you. Peter sends over to us all the time, it's so good.
I they, love Middle Eastern desserts or Greek desserts, mm -hmm. so I love it. Well, they both look beautiful. I'm gonna try this one first. There's a little bit of honey, and there's a little bit of cinnamon too with those walnuts. It's almost like a combination of ice cream and yogurt because mm -hmm. of the and custard and everything. And it's, it's full so fat. It's not like a it's not like a fat free faya. Yeah. Faya, what is it? How do you say it? Chobani. Whatever. I'm into the full fat yeah, of this too. dessert right me now. Too. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. And I love the fresh strawberries. Oh my goodness. Mm. That's absolutely beautiful. So good. You're one of the easiest person. Thank you. Thank you. You've been so amazing to talk to. I kind of feel like I've known you for years. Me too. Honestly. Oh my gosh. I, I really enjoy hanging out with Thank you today you. so, so much. And I can't wait for the next season of Chop. When does that start, by the way? Oh my gosh. In August. It starts in August. Every July. August. July. No, we always shoot differently, but this season we just finished okay. last week. And we're back in August. Then we're taking a little bit of a break. And then we're back again in October. Okay. So. Well, I look forward to the new season and the new Very basket good. ingredients. I, I really feel privileged. I feel like I have the inside track. Wonderful. Thank you so much for spending the day with Thank me. Thank you. Really Anytime. Thank Thanks. you.